you want to get out of the Llama 4 hype, I've got a Chinese innovation that you should definitely appreciate. This comes from Tencent, which is a very popular tech company in China. And they've released a model called Hunyuan T1. This is not a new announcement, but I feel that this is very, very important at this time of this US companies just grinding the same thing again and again. Why this is significant? Because this is the world's first Mamba powered ultra large model. What does it mean? It means that it is a different architecture from whatever these US based companies companies are doing. So Mamba is also something that came out of US research innovation, but they are not capitalizing on it. Like for example, the latest Llama 4 is still a mixture of experts model and you hardly see any innovation. There are a couple of innovation that people have pointed out here and there, but it is a tried and tested solution. But this Chinese lab or this Chinese company has created a really good high quality large language model that is also Mamba powered which is not the exact same dense transformers that we are using, but it is having a hybrid approach where you have got a hybrid transformer Mamba MOE large model. So this was something that the team first launched back in March. T1 preview, which is like a thinking model that is a reasoning model, a medium sized model. But now with the T1, the official T1, they actually increase the size of the model, making it much, much bigger. And this model has uh, got a lot of these benchmarks really, really good. And one of the most important training strategies that they reveal is that in terms of training, they adopted a curriculum learning approach to gradually increase the data difficulty. I think if I'm right, this is something that came long back in form of, I think five, whenever like Microsoft used to release it, having a curriculum learning approach, I could be wrong, but I've seen this somewhere in one of those US research models and uh, they have gradually increased the data difficulty while expanding the model's context length. So if you know one thing is that a lot of these models are trained with the context length itself. That, that is another criticism that Llama 4 has got. So if you see Llama 4, it says it supports a 10 million context window, but it was never trained on 10 million context window. The model was trained on 256,000 context window. Okay. So the 10 million is an expansion that comes later in the process, but the model itself was trained with 256,000 context window. And this model, if you see here, that is what they're explaining that they've increased the data difficulty of the training, but also expanded the context length of the model. This enabled the model to improve the reasoning ability while also learning to use the tokens efficiently for reasoning. I mean, this is honestly an innovation, right? Like they're trying to do something new architecture, like slightly, detailing about the training process. The model itself is not open source. I should highlight this at this particular point. Here, who, the Tencent company has open sourced a lot of different models. You can go to their uh, repo and then see on Hugging Face, they've got the 3D models, they've got the Instruct models, they've got the large model, but somehow they've decided to withhold this model, maybe because it's like completely new in terms of innovation. And uh, regarding the training strategy itself, they refer this to classic reinforcement learning strategy. So they've got like data replay, periodic policy resetting, which has significantly improved the long-term stability of the model training by over 50%. We don't have much more information other than this. And during the alignment phase, which is like generally the post-training phase with human preferences phase, we adopted a unified reward system feedback scheme for self-rewarding. So this is something that they've done before. This is not GRPO very much like what um, what DeepSeek had done, but this is a self-rewarding system where they did not have a reward model in the first place. Then they used it with the reward model, guiding the model to self-improve. So model shows a richer content details and more efficient information in its responses. As good as this blog post on, the model is not that good in terms of the responses. Like some responses are really good, but some are like a kind of dicey at this particular point, but still I wanted to highlight this because this is a really, really good innovation plus also something like that is available in production. There are a bunch of benchmarks. This model is actually really, really good. They, the way they compared this model, they're comparing it with all the flagship models, GPT 4.5, O1, which is um, OpenAI's Pro model, Quick 32 billion. This is from Quen, another Chinese lab, and DeepSeek R1. So this is like all the comparison they've made. But if you were to compare this particular one with Llama 4 uh, Maverick, the largest model that was released by Llama, a meta, which is not Behemoth. Behemoth is something that they're training, but if you compare it with Maverick, you would be surprised to see some of this benchmark numbers. Now you might argue that this is a much bigger model, but 
in effect this is a new architecture they have done something new but still this model scores much better than llama for sure for example if you see on mmlu pro new on t1 has scored 87.2 while if you go see llama 4 in terms of the benchmark uh, you would see llama 4 maverick on mm mu mmlu pro it is 80.5 and this is 87.2 gpqa diamond it is 69.3 and this is 69.8 almost like on par with that there are like other benchmarks where you can see that new one t1 is not a rubbish model it it has a pretty good job but if you were to access the model i think one option is for you to go to this demo that they have put together which requires you to add uh, i think the the phone number and all the other details but the other way is you can go to hugging face and then start accessing this model i just simply went ahead and then said write a short story about life in five million years it did not complete the short story but the way it thought about it the thinking process you've got like uh, okay i need to write a short story about life in five million years mm, where do i start and it goes on the discussion let me outline the setting earth in five million years terraformed cities blend with the nature Humans have adapted bioluminous traits. Society is harmonious with Trek. I mean, such a very positive outlook. I know this is all RL itself. Like they've done some kind of, a, or maybe like some kind of alignment where they wanted like an optimistic societal future. But it's very interesting to see this kind of a, a futuristic setup. It says, I need to ensure that the story isn't too cliche. Avoid typical robots or dystopian themes. Maybe focus on ecological balance, cultural evolution, make the discovery meaningful, show continuity between past and future. Very interesting. So if you want to have uh, more discussions, you can just go refresh this Hugging Face Spaces where you can go just share it. And I can just go ask like how many hours are there in strawberry? Okay. I've intentionally added two extra hours. So I just want to see if it can do it. And we just saw a couple of days back, uh, some of this basic mundane desk Llama 4 is doing pretty bad. So it is saying the user is asking this. So between position three and four, there are two hours. However, user specifically wrote strawberry with an extra hour. So there should be a base. Run. Okay. Um, it has four hours. Okay. So it knows the correct spelling of strawberry. It should be three hours, but you know, because I've intentionally misspelled to fool this AI, which it doesn't know. Hopefully it doesn't mind it and it says that the user has four hours which is very interesting and uh, you know you can just try this out with a different different question i'm particularly impressed with this like the creative reasoning and all the other things i'm not comparing it with r1 deep seek r1 i'm not sure if this model is as good as r1 even though the benchmarks say so i still have a massive respect for deep seek r1 but this is a model that you shouldn't ignore especially the fact that this is not your standard regular architecture They've tried to build a hybrid architecture with Transformers and Mamba. And if you do not know what is Mamba, I will link my previous video in the YouTube description for you to try it out. And that is one of the reasons why this model could be efficiently deployed. So I'm definitely looking forward to see more Chinese innovation in this particular space. But if you have got any thought, let me know in the comment section. See you in another video. Happy prompting.